Hey, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about animating lip sync dialogue. We have talked about this a little bit in the past. We did a video on three tips and tricks kind of to keep in mind while working on a lip sync shot. I don't want that. But today I wanna to get a little bit deeper. We're gonna break this into five sections. Selecting your audio, breaking down the dialogue, lip sync specific workflows, the four components of language, and finally polish, things to add to really seal it all together. And the link to Patreon is down below as well in case you like what I'm doing and wanna support the channel or you wanna participate in the weekly animation dailies where we review work together as a group. Super fun. Now, let's talk about lip sync. Execute order 66. First, let's lay down some grammar rules. If you are working on something for your demo reel, that's one situation versus like an assignment, an exercise, something just as quick practice. If it is a more serious shot that you're gonna spend a lot of time on, I would highly recommend not picking anything from a movie, TV show, or video game, or if it's mildly popular, avoid it, like the plague. Uh, the reason for this is because if you pick a line from Forrest Gump, as an example, or from The Office, I've done that. Bros before hoes! Somebody has probably also seen that. And so the moment that your shot comes on and they hear that audio, they're gonna go, oh, that's from this thing. They're now distracted from your work and really, you know, focused on, oh, who is that actor? I know that voice. Like they're not looking at your work. Or what's even maybe worse than that is it kind of goes into these two different sections where there's the perception of the audience where they kind of already know what's behind, they know what was happening in the scene, the character's train of thought, what was going on in the movie, the plot, like, that might influence how they perceive your shot and therefore whether they think it's good or bad or whatever because you're being compared to the original. The other perception is yours as you work on it. Maybe your choices have been tainted because you saw it one way and maybe that's the only way you can see it. Or maybe you're trying to avoid it even though it's a great acting choice. Either way, your decisions are kind of compromised because you're no longer just purely being creative and coming up with your own stuff. You have a little bit of a bias when it comes to that dialogue. So there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. It's just not, it's often not the best solution for these reasons. Now, for an exercise, a quick test, anything just for fun, do it, who cares? Like, have fun with it. This is something that I don't think a lot of people talk about. There's kind of this divide that should exist between demo reel shots and like assignment exercise stuff that most people don't really think about. Every, everything's all just blended. You know, if you work on the walk cycle for school and then the, the weight assignment for school, often it's like, well, that's my demo reel. And maybe it is, because that's all you have, but you should be doing little practice exercises that are small and easy to get through and like make big progress and then apply it to bigger, more creative pieces of work. There should be kind of that separation. So if you want to do a quick clip from the office, because the dialogue's hilarious and you just want to take a stab at it, Go for it. But if you're gonna really put some time into a demo reel thing, then maybe find something a little bit more original. And quick side note, never pick anything animated. Like if you have dialogue from an animated something, don't do it. That's kind of why games are in there as well. Uh, first of all, you've already seen that thing animated, so you're it, it, you're, you're tainted. And again, you're comparing. You're then gonna be compared against the original done by a professional. So. Mm. Maybe not the best play. So where do you find good audio? Well, podcasts, live streams, there are so many th audiobooks. There are so many places that are really untapped gems. If you are gonna go for something from a more famous actor or a character, I would recommend interviews. Often, you know, people have seen the movie but may not have seen all the interviews for it. So my old hiccup shot that I did. I've known Toothless for 12 years, and but he and I haven't worked together in a while. But it was like riding a bike as soon as we kinda, we just, we have a thing and we just kind of connected and all of us did. I pulled, I wanted Hiccup's voice, but I didn't want something from the movie for all the reasons I already told you. So I went to the How to Train Your Dragon interviews. Actually, I take it back. I took audio from uh, This Is The End, an interview for a different movie that he's also in. And then I took, I listened to every time Hiccup said the word toothless in both one and two at the time movies. And I found the one that matched the cadence. I was like, ah, oh, that, that instance of Toothless. And I spliced the audio to make it sound like he's talking about Toothless. So it feels like it could have been in the movie, but it was from some interview. And that's why there's some background noise. There's like music in the back. I've known Toothless for 12 years. When you are selecting dialogue, not only do you want to pick something unique and from a source that most people haven't heard for all those reasons, you also want to find something clear and clean and nice to listen to. I'm not a huge fan of old pieces from the 40s and 50s or, you know, old movies that sound like they're old movies. Just the audio technology wasn't as good and so it's distracting. There's like a fuzziness. You want the focus on your animation and not like, wait, I'm not really hearing the dialogue because then your lip sync really has to sell it. So look for stuff that's been shot on a nice microphone with not a lot of background noise and you don't really have to think about it. It just sounds good. And the key to when you are searching for dialogue to avoid the entire first half of everything I just said, when you are searching, search by ear only. Don't look. Like if you're you know, going on YouTube looking for interviews, you're going on live streams listening for stuff, like 
don't look. Literally, take your hand and cover the screen if it's on your phone, or put the window off to the side on your computer and just listen, grab the URL and copy it to an MP3 file. Like, do whatever you have to do to not see it. You wanna go in completely blind. You wanna just have an audio file so that your imagination is allowed to run wild. And you can do whatever you wanna do with that shot. Whatever you think makes sense, go for it. And maybe you do wanna go back at one point, look for reference, but come up with the original ideas yourself. It's gonna be a huge help to you. The last thing in this section, and the most important thing in my opinion, is having a moment in your dialogue, something that stands out. Not every shot needs this, not every shot has this, but something that generally I look for is finding something in that dialogue, in that file, to have some fun. Now this might be some kind of like a lip smack, some kind of, you know, like my Grimmel shot. That's exactly what I was looking for. This is it. But it's not only about that. Just a weird sound, maybe a, a syllable, a stutter. Maybe it's silence, having just nothing, having a pause. That can be really powerful and really helpful. Having dialogue, 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 di right? That middle section is where you can have some fun. That's where you get to go off script. You get to do something with the character's perspective, their thought process, something that really makes your scene shine and memorable. Because maybe the dialogue is a little bit flat. Maybe you don't really have much of a choice about it, but if you have that pause, you can do something that makes the audience think a little bit. For more information on that, you can watch my subtext video, Interview with JP. That's a good one. Dives into this hand in hand, perfect stuff. But let's dive into breaking down the dialogue from a lip sync animation perspective. Not subtext, just straight technical dialogue, mouth, animation. The first thing I always recommend doing, and I do this with the students that I mentor in my Patreon mentorship stuff, we do this in dailies, um, I do this when I do re reviews over on Agora. Whenever we're talking dialogue, I almost always end up just writing down the audio, just writing it down in phrases and trying to break it down visually before trying to go into the computer. This can be really helpful. We're gonna come back to this as well. So as you might expect, I broke all of my rules when making the preparations for this video, and all the audio clips I picked are things you'd probably recognize. Well, that's mostly just because I thought you'd have fun with it, and because they are more of those exercise assignments, they're not for demo reels or nothing I'm gonna be like, look, I did creative things. It's a technical exercise, and that's the point. So sometimes it's okay. Today, let's roll the dialogue. War. War never changes. Now, if you've played the Fallout games, you know this dialogue, and if you haven't, then I'm sorry you're missing out on some great games. By the way, Fallout. Yeah. So in this technical exercise, let's break down the dialogue. So here's what I would do. I would write down the whole thing. Now, if this were a longer piece of dialogue, I'd break it up into phrases. I'd have war, and then I'd have war under changes. And then if I had more, I'd continue doing it in these different kind of blocks, separate from each other. If you've already watched JP's subtext video that we did, uh, that will show you how to take this dialogue, break it down into its subtext, into its emotional component, and then act that out and show that in your animation. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we're looking at this dialogue and trying to find landmarks. Now, I'm gonna keep coming back to this, this exercise, but the idea here is sometimes there are emotional cues. You know, maybe you can hear that somebody's smiling in some dialogue. You can hear there's a little bit of a laugh being stifled. Maybe there's someone's like trying, I don't know, not to cough or something. Like, you can hear things, right? And those are things you wanna take note of. You wanna make little annotations to yourself. But the big thing is to focus on the sounds and the flow. Now I'm gonna come back to this when we get to the four components section, but the main things I'm going to be caring about in this are any sounds in this that have hard rules. Because like a lot of things, the dialogue here, some of this is very flexible, very fluid, and a little bit subjective to like, what are we gonna do with these letters? But certain things, you cannot make these sounds any other way, which makes parts of this pretty easy. Now to give you an example of that, I'm actually just gonna write a word. I don't know why this popped into my head, but I literally just thought mumbo jumbo. That's the word I'm choosing, so let's go with it. This is going to be a significantly easier word to break down sound-wise because of a few things. M's are kind of easy in the sense that you know exactly what's going to happen. You cannot make the M sound without your lips closing. There's no way to do it. You have to close your mouth and mm, right? Even for one frame, it has to be there. So we kind of know what's gonna happen on this M and this M, and B does the same thing. The B is created by the release of pressure built up from B, right? It's just the air B, being pushed out of your lips that's been built up. So same thing with B. We kind of have rules for those. We have another M, I missed that one. So like half of this word has already been accounted for in terms of like what we're gonna be doing with it. And we kind of all know that O sound is like, oh, like, like we're gonna be going, oh, it's gonna be circle. How big the circle, how wide, different things like that's 
flexible but we kind of have a general idea. I'm gonna come back to that again. The U, we have two of the same sound there, so you can kind of copy paste and kind of know what to expect there. The J is the wild card. Wild card, bitches! Yeah! What? The J is compression of the lips, the J, right? It's this J. It's this whooshing of everything kind of coming together and pushing out the J, if that makes sense. You're gonna see a lot of these funny little examples today. But this word gives a good explanation of how I would break down the sounds, where you look for anything with a rule and you look for things that you have kind of an idea of what's happening and then you find the stuff that's like, okay, well, what's that? Well, it's kind of this. And then you, you work it out together. And then it becomes the puzzle of putting them all together, but not in a way that feels really choppy, but where they can start, sort of blend together in the right way. Let's keep that in mind. And we'll come back to that for our dialogue here. War, war never changes because how we tackle this is gonna come down to your choice of workflow when it comes to lip sync. Now I've done a video, the seven professional workflow, or what is it? The seven workflows of professional animators. It's like a 40 minute video. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever made. I'm very proud of it. And if you haven't seen it, please go watch it. A lot of that translates really well here to dialogue. The ones that I wanna focus on are sort of a straight ahead, what I call looping phrases, pose to pose, landmark style lip sync animation, or more kind of a layered passes. Also, and before I even skip it, technically there's auto-generated at this point. If you haven't seen NVIDIA Omniverse, there is a new tool, Audio to Face, which I've been playing with. I'm gonna do some testing where you can just feed the mesh an audio file and it will generate full facial data for it, for the lip sync, and you can put it on whatever rig you want. That's super interesting. I'm gonna figure out how useful this is and how to you know, use that in our workflow. So I'll get back to you on that. Make sure you subscribe if you don't wanna miss that. Oh, and while you're at it, you can hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying this. Please do that, it helps a lot. Thank you. Starting off with a more straight ahead workflow, you pretty much just kind of begin at the beginning and you just move forward and try to put stuff in as you go. And I call it looping passes because you kind of just have to take loops through it. You, you, you almost never get it right on the first time. You have to keep watching it a few times and adjusting and adjusting and going, oh, I kind of forgot this, I kind of missed that one, da, da, da. And you just keep, kind of keep going through it. It's sort of the most like unplanned workflow for this, I guess, if you're just like, I'm just gonna do some lip sync and I don't know. You might have video reference that you're pulling from. And so that can kind of give you a guideline as well of where to go, but you'll probably go through and, you know, get what you get from your reference, go back through, see if you missed anything, go back and push it, da, da, da. There's a lot of repeat stuff. I don't feel like there's a whole lot to say on that one. Now, a more post to post workflow for lip sync could be looking for landmarks. So again, coming back here, maybe you block in all the M's, you block in all the O's, and you're more focused on the specific moments of your dialogue. And so starting with the biggest shapes or the smallest shapes or the most interesting sounds can also really help kind of chunk it up into phrases. And now onto our last workflow. By the way, everything I'm about to show you works for all three of these workflows. It really doesn't matter. It's just kind of what works best for you. But the last workflow I wanna talk about is layered passes. And that's where you kind of do like a jaw pass, just up and down of the jaw. You you do, you know, just the the tongue by itself. And you, you kind of just go through and do, you focus on one thing at a time as layered animators would do. And you do it in layers and you do it. And it's not that you're using actual animation layers. You're not like creating new anim layers in the bottom right corner. It's just that you are kind of taking it one, one piece, one layer at a time. And this is a perfect, oh, got it. I'm good. This is now a perfect opportunity to jump into the next section of the video, the four components of language. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Now, everything you're about to hear I have made up, not that I, I created this. No, I've, I've pulled this from a lot of places. This is just kind of what I've collected. This is the section where I'm like, hey, like here's the thing I wanna share. Don't use this as law though. So add to this with your own experience. The four components of language, in my opinion, are corners in and out, mouth up and down, lip shape, and tongue. These four things together can more or less give you everything you need. And if you take them one piece at a time, make sure they're all working together and flowing properly in context of each one respectively, I think you're gonna have some pretty solid lipstick animation. So let me show you how this all works. All right, so returning back to our examples here, let's talk about these with these four components. Let's start with mumbo jumbo, the easier one. Now, the jaw, we made a lot of these rules already. We already said that the M, the M, the B, the other M's and B's. M, 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 M to the B. Those are jaw. That's the jaw open and close. It's gotta be closed. So we know that if we were looking, I'm just gonna to start to draw kind of graphs. If the graph editor freaks you out, I have a video that should hopefully help. Um, you don't have to think of this like the graph editor. I'm just trying to visualize it. So, and I'm, I'm a graph person. So if this is zero 
and this is one, and then let's just say that this is negative one. It doesn't really matter what the numbers are, it's just that this is our baseline. That's neutral, that's like T-pose, character comes in super bland, neutral zero, right? With the jaw, the M is gonna be closed. And M, that's, that's M and B are down here, M and B, we know they're gonna be roughly here. Now, every time there's another letter, an, a U, an O, potentially a J and a U, right? That's some time that it's gonna be up. So we know the jaw is gonna open at some point. This part is pretty easy. You know the jaw is gonna be opening and closing, but now you kind of know when it's happening. Now I have a video on the worst animation advice that I have ever heard, part one, I have to do more. Uh, in that video, one of the things I shared was my dislike of the advice to have the frame mismatch by two frames, like, oh, like, your dialogue and your animation need to be two frame off sync to properly work. I don't like that advice because I, I don't think it's detailed enough. Um, and you can watch that for the full context, but one of the things that I hear a lot is like, oh, like things need to be mismatched. I don't think that's really true. There is one way where you can mismatch it and it works, but if you mismatch it the other way, it doesn't work. It's completely off and it'll look awful. There's stuff like that, and I talk about that, but the big thing I wanna kinda look at is sounds blend, we mumble, we talk really fast, we combine a lot of sounds together. When you prepare a sentence in your head, you're not preparing syllable by syllable. You're preparing collections of words and therefore sounds, and then when you present them, they all kind of have to just mush together because you have to get it out. So, when people mumble, you're blending that really aggressively, but if you're speaking very eloquently and taking your time, things get a little bit more separated. It's a little bit easier to have each sound be represented by its own shape. So those phenomes or phonemes or however you pronounce them, that library of the A shape, the B shape, the C shape, those sometimes work. They're often a great starting point, a great spring springboard to, you know, lead with, block it out, but you usually can't just stick with it. You can't just go duh, 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 plug in all the sounds and call it a day. It almost never works and it usually feels very like staggered and jarring because there's no blending. You need to have it flow. So, back to the thing about that advice, one of the things that that advice I think does fairly well is it's trying to communicate that sometimes it's not that the, you know, you're, you're mismatching your lip sync to your dialogue, it's that a lot of sounds you have to prepare for. Some sounds happen like the moment the lip makes the sound, that's what's making the sound. Other times it's when that, when that shape is broken or when that shape is prepared that you get something and so therefore it, it it's off sync. Let me explain what I mean. I can I can close my mouth, mmm, and then make the M sound way later, right? Like I can make the sound, but it's not until I actually make the sound with my vocal cords and then having my mouth closed is what I get the mmm. If I have my mouth open, ah, uh, it's a different sound. It's the same effort. I'm still doing the same thing with my vocal cords. I'm just going mmm, ma, ma. It's the same effort, right? It's just whether my my mouth is kind of muffling it or releasing it as just a burst of air. Ah. That's one thing where like, you could have the lip close way back here and be prepared for the M. Like you don't have to hit that on this frame. You don't have to have it go mm, and make the sound. You usually do want it there early if you can have it and then go mmm and then like have the pressure. Do something to show that. The B for example, having a B sound, we have that here. Having a B sound is not about having the mouth closed. That's not, as much of an M, like the M, it's the rule, like it has to be closed. The B, it's a little different. You do have to have the mouth closed for the B, but the sound doesn't come from the closed mouth. The sound comes from the opening of the mouth. It's, if you've ever played a video game, you kind of know how this works. You can hold the trigger down, and then when you release, like both of those actions are registered as different things. There's pressing and there's releasing. And it's kind of the same thing here. There's pressing the lips together, but then there's the release. B is the release. B is the burst of air coming out. Terrible example, you get the idea. You can build it, but it doesn't happen until it pops open. P and B work the same way. That's why they're called plosives. Well, that's not why they're called plosives, but they're called plosives because explosives. It's the explosion. It's the plosive. I don't know. I don't know words. That's the deal. So the B, this has to happen. Like the B has to land on when this leaves. So if you had to line it up, it's like, yeah, the B might be closed, but then when you hear the B sound, it's opening. And so you have the opening happening on the B. So you need to have it closed before this frame. It needs to already have been closed. Otherwise your B is gonna seem like a weak, it's gonna be a weak part of your animation. So it works really well that we've got M and B because M needs to be closed. B needs to be opening. Easy, that part's really simple. So we kind of have 
M can be closed for as long as you want. They're just gonna go up to somewhere. Maybe it's one and it's open all the way. Wow, like that's a, you know, 100%. You might be like, Mambo Jumbo, probably not. It kind of depends on your audio, but it's probably somewhere down here. Mambo Jumbo, something kind of, eh, comes up, closes, stays closed. Now, something you can also do is it doesn't have to go mum, bo. It doesn't have to freeze. You can go mum, and you can compress, you can push it. So you can actually have this dip in here and go past zero. You can actually have it go mm, and squash, squash and stretch. You can do all that with the face. So you can push this down below its neutral position. You can post things with the lips. You can do different things, but just the jaw, you can push that down, mumbo, jumbo, and then you know you can do different things. Again, we're just focusing on landmarks when I'm doing this right now. The way that I pronounce the word, there's a, there's a focus. Mumbo jumbo. I could go mumbo jumbo, or I could go mumbo jumbo, right? Can you hear the difference? To me, this is bigger than this. Mumbo jumbo, that's how I look at it. So I'm thinking that this open of the mouth is gonna be bigger than this open of the mouth. So we kinda have a baseline of like, that's gonna be bigger than this. That gives us contrast, that gives us an opportunity to push things, we know kinda, we're not just going to use the excessive bum 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 bum. We want to push it a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting, and so we can go bigger here. You know, we can we can probably take one of these compressions and make one of these lower than the other one. Take your pick. But this is the fun part. This is where you get to break it down and do some things. This is kind of how I'd look at the jaw, the open and closed. That's going to give you the Muppet version of your lip sync, which is a lot. This is a lot of what makes it work. What is in the box? Is it cookie? Uh, no, it is not a cookie. Bye bye. Oh, but wait a second. If your lip sync, if the jaw movement isn't working, that's usually the biggest, it, I mean, it's, it's one of the bigger, they're all important, but it's one of the most obvious ones, I guess. What you don't want is your jaw to do this. You don't want the jaw flapping up and down. Bah, 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 bah. We usually like to group sounds together with the jaw motion. So wherever you can, it's not that everything's gonna be super smooth and go mumbo jumbo. Like it's not just gonna go up and down and be super smooth. Sometimes what you'll have is it'll come up, slow down, go up again, and then come down. Sometimes it'll go up, kind of pause, and then dive. It's generally always moving in this direction until it has its inflection point and flips. That helps with the flow because you have a general idea of which direction things are going, even if it's going up, kind of slows down, but still goes up, still goes up, that can help. But sometimes it does just straight up reverse. But it's these quick changes in direction that can be attention grabbing. So when you have that and you look at your graph and you're looking at your drop in and close, sometimes that's how it is. So don't like get rid of it just automatically. It's a flag for you to take a look, make sure that's how it would be. Try it a few different ways, see if it works and just consider it. So that's just something to look out for. That's the jaw section of this word. Whoa. The next thing is the corners, in and out. Now, up and down of the corners is often where you get your smile and your front. I'm mostly just focusing on the in and out. The width of the mouth is extremely important when it comes to flow. This is probably the biggest one when it comes to making the dialogue make sense. I think this is one of the things that makes your, that could make your lip sync, not just look inaccurate, but look like broken. So what's next? Same thing applies. You don't really want it just going back and forth. We usually, again, it, it should be elastic and it should be, you know, quick, but it shouldn't feel jittery. The jaw is all about the rules of the sound of that letter and of, of the word. But I feel like the corners are more based on the adjacent sounds, the connecting stuff, the, the, the neighboring sounds than the one that you're on right now, at least in terms of direction of like where you're going with the flow. So this is the one that can be really, really, really misleading. When you are recording Reference, one thing you don't want to do is record your reference really slowly. If I go mumbo jumbo, like if you're trying to figure it out, war, war never, you're going to get these really exaggerated references. You don't want that. They're going to feel too much, overacted, unrealistic, unauthentic. And that's usually because, not just because like the jaw movements gets really crazy, but it's usually because you end up focusing on individual sounds width. Like if I just go A, E, I, O, U, 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 right? You can see it's like wide, narrow, U. But if I say, hey you, yeah, it starts off wide, hey you, but it's because the H and the E, hey you. If I say the letter U, I'm kind of saying U. 
if I say it slowly, but if I just go, you, like this, if I just say, you, it might not, you know, it, it completely changes based on your pronunciation. So this is where like accents and dialogues and like, this is where things get a little bit more complex. But the thing is to not fool yourself by sitting there in front of a mirror and going slowly, don't do that. You're gonna get inaccurate results. So you need to say it at speed, say it at the right speed and you know, try to memorize your lines, say it with confidence and just see like, what are the, what's going on here? Cause if I say mumbo jumbo, most of that is a pretty in um, corner thing. Mumbo jumbo, I don't think my mouth ever really goes wide for any of that. If I wanted to push it, you know, maybe I'd go mumbo jumbo. So you can, you can slow it down to see where would I push? Like where would go big? You could also do the same thing with the M. You could start with like a wide, like a smile, like mumbo jumbo, all right? Like, I hope this is working. <laughs> so you could start wide here. You could go a little wider here, but it's probably gonna be widest here, a little bit less wide here. Um, but the rest of this is is pretty pretty pushed in because of all the O's and, and B's. Well, the B can be big. So this is maybe not the best example here. Let's look at the War Never Changes one for this. So if I say war, war never changes. That's one where there are a few points where it does widen. So I say war. War never changes. So this kind of N-E is a widening point. War, like the, the R has no desire to widen your lips. <laughs> That's a really weird sentence to say. But R has no desire to make it any wider, right? Er, er, like it's pretty, it's like an O or a U. It's all pretty in. And the A is flexible. You can you can say A in different ways. A hard A, which I think, what is it? Like a A, because it ends in the sound of an E. A. A. wide. If it's ah, it's kind of middle. Ah, again, wide. So again, it's all the sounds. Anyway, war is like an oh, oh sound. War, war. So it's it's in. So in, in, never. We widen. So we kind of know it has to go up here. Hey, jumping in while editing because I start to just devolve at this point and I don't explain this very well. What I'm trying to say through all this section and what I should have spent more time talking about is with the corners of the mouth in and out, there are guidelines, but you I don't want to tell anybody that like, you have to do it a certain way. Because yeah, having an E sound with a wider shape usually makes it read better, but you can also do it the other way. And I don't spend enough time talking about that because you can say E, but you can also say E. You don't have to exaggerate it that far. You can if you want to for effect, if it helps it sell the shot. But there are certain things that you can really go either way and it doesn't really have a preference. Like I start with war never changes. The, the changes, you can say changes, or you can say changes, both work. You can hear that it kind of changes the way I say it a little bit. And so your dialogue might kind of dictate that. If it sounds happy, changes. More of a smiley sound versus changes. Sounds more, I don't know, something else. And usually when you're stuck between, do I go wide, do I not go wide? It comes to three things. Number one, what just looks better? It might just look better one way or another and then you go with that because it's animation it's meant to be appealing and entertaining so go there but it also might be based on the emotion with which it's said again you can hear a smile you can hear a frown you can hear it a different way and the third thing is adjacent sounds if you had a sound right before like this war never changes and i had never and i'm saying okay let's do that wide well then you're starting wide never changes that means you could go from wide to wide keep it wide and then just kind of you know it doesn't have to change much and it could work um also never changes you can do that but you can also go the other way never changes you can totally go the other way and it more is based on like the attitude that you want to like embed into it so it's super dependent on how you want it to look how you want it to feel and how it's meant to come across and blend with the adjacent surrounding sounds so it is very subjective. I'm just giving you an example here of kind of the thought process of one way to interpret all of this. It's not the way to interpret it. And it's not like these, what I'm finding in this shot and the, the answers I'm coming to in this example aren't something that you can copy and paste into your own work and be like, this is what he said, this will work every time. This is just kind of the way to think about it and figure it out the way I do it anyway. And so if something doesn't sit right with you and you're like, you know, I don't think that works for my shot, try it the other way. I just wanted to share my process. But anyway, back to the video. S is often a very wide shape. It doesn't have to be, you can say so, you know, so. But that's what I meant by the, the corners are kind of directed by what's around them. 
That's what I mean. These sounds don't act on their own. If you slow it down, then yeah. But if you say it at speed, it's these combinations that give you the vibe of the full word. Saying just the letter S and going S super wide. But I go, so, so. Then it can be really narrow because the O is in charge. The O is stronger than the S in this situation. And so that's the thing where like at the end, we end with an S with nothing on the side. Eh, like the sound of an eh, that's wider, so it changes. It gives us the opportunity to say like, change, change the G is the most in part of the word. E is flexible, but the eh kind of wants to be a little bit wider, so it might be a little bit higher up. And then the S also wants to be pretty wide, so that's one where you can kind of lean into it and say, all right, let's, let's, let's ease into a S. So you might end up with this, this nice flow where you can kind of go low to high and a little bit of playfulness where you can go da da da. But what you don't want is like, never change like you don't want it going a lot of up and down within a word you can do it within a sentence try not to do it too much within a word unless you really need to for some reason it's probably not necessary so that will give you flow of corners that's x that's translate x for those for jaw we've already talked about it but what would do for war never changes I'll say let's hear it again war war never changes i feel like this war is bigger than this war so i put it higher War never changes. Changes to me is the big one. That's the big sound. So I look for those landmarks and I say, all right, well, changes is the, the high point. That's my extreme up. That's my biggest changes. V is going to be pretty low because V has a rule. V and F have the rule of pretty much teeth on bottom lip. V and F. It's a slightly different amount of kind of bottom lip curl. The pose is a little bit different looking, but it, the F and the V is upper teeth, bottom lip. So there's a rule of how that's going to look which is hinting to the next step, lip shape. This is one where this can help you get a lot of the shapes that you're missing. The big shapes, the big sounds come from the jaw open and closed. Making that actually feel like the correct letter is being said largely comes down to corners. But when you don't wanna miss the things that are kind of blending in there, the stuff that's kind of hiding and sneaking by, that's where the lips come into play. I mean, there are some sounds that completely rely on it. The V and the F are a great example where that's entirely lip shape. But when we're not talking about those ones with the rules, well, uh, lip shape for S is just kind of getting out of the way of the top teeth. You want to see a little bit of those teeth for the S. S um, that's another thing with like, where does a lisp come from? A lisp, a lisp is, is, is when you have the, uh, the tongue interrupting the teeth during the S shape. I'm trying really hard to do a lisp. I actually used to have a lisp a um, long time ago, but that's, I had to like figure out like, why do I have a lisp? I don't like the way I'm saying S's. Something wrong with it to be able to lisp. I just I just didn't like the way I was saying words. And I was like, why do I have this? And I realized I was like, no one taught me how to say s's properly. My tongue is in the way. I'm saying f, f. I don't want to say s. I want to say s. So, the tongue. If you have a character who has a lisp, then you need to involve the tongue. I'm afraid I can't help you. It's gone. You know, it's 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 nothing but code now. And the lip shape. It's kind of like the, uh, the f and the v, right? And you have the tongue underneath the teeth. But yeah, for an S, you want to see the teeth and you don't want to see any tongue and you want to have usually wider lips. And so that is kind of a guideline for the S. There's a rule for the B, guideline for the S, kind of know what you're looking for. When it comes to the G, when it comes to the R, when it comes to a lot of other letters here, you can kind of go different directions with this. There are some things that are going to sneak by without it. And there are some things that it'll just kind of help you push it. The, uh, the sneer controls. A lot of rigs will have this, right? You can do, right? I feel like this is a very fun video. You're getting a very good flavor of what I'm actually like in my day-to-day -day life. There's sound effects and funny faces. That's a good example of like lip shape. I mean, that's, it's not the oh, jaw, it's not the corners. It's not used in every sound, but it can help to push things. And so with an R, you can just kind of go R and you're going to have like the, the curl of like the top lip going up, the bottom lip coming down, right? You can have that like, right? Like the nose and the mouth. It's also, it's, it's often drawn like that. I think in the Fairly Odd Parents, it's drawn like, I think in the Fairly Odd Parents, it's literally drawn like that. It's like this kind of like Rrr! shape, but you can also push it further. If you're going like, really? Like if you're on like, Rrr! if you want like more of like a, like a facial flex of like Rrr! a growl or something, you can, you can push that and you can have those sneer controls kind of come up and go like, Rrr! 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 I don't know if this is working for you, but hopefully you, you're getting what I mean that you can use these to either accentuate a shape, make sure it doesn't get missed, or things like changes. Changes. I was doing The War Never Changes, and I actually did a version. Here, I'll show you. War. War never changes. War. War never changes. 
You can see how the CH feels a little bit more aggressive here on the right and a little bit more like a CH. The, ch the flex of the upper lip I feel is helped here. K is another one where it's on release. It's an open mouth. It's like a B, but with your mouth open, <laughs> right? It's, <laughs> it's set off by like air that you kind of trap with the back of your tongue and in the, in kind of the back of your mouth and go <laughs> and you <laughs> and you send it over the top. But often we say, okay, like it often happens on the side of the mouth. Okay. And you don't have to go, okay. It doesn't often happen right in the middle. That's another thing just in general we'll talk about with polish is like appeal and pushing poses, but lip shape is like, you can, you can tweak things, you can push things, you can go more on one side to the other. That's actually something with uh, Elastigirl in The Incredibles, but the actress behind Elastigirl, she has this kind of Southern accent. She kind of talks out the side of her mouth sometimes. I'm not all dark and angsty. I'm Elastigirl. I'm, you know, flexible. Ha <laughs> ha, no theme song or I'll turn this bus right around. And you can hear that in her dialogue and you can see it in the animation. There's a lot of stuff like that when you animate a character with a certain dialect or way of speaking, you want to, you want to push that, you want to put that in there somewhere. Um, and lip shape is a big way on how you can do that. Whether it's just where you put the lips or how you shape them, things like that. You don't want to just leave it at a default. You want to, you don't want to open the character's mouth and just have the football mouth. You want to actually shape that pose. The last one is the tongue. And this one is extremely important. People forget this all the time. I often critique work where there's just no tongue animation and it makes like half the words not make any sense. There's not a lot that the tongue does visually. It's a very subtle thing, but it's very, very important. We catch a lot. We see a lot of things. We're very used to talking to people. And so we can pick out when something doesn't feel right. There are certain things that have hard rules, an L, a D. There are other sounds where the tongue just kind of helps add to the experience, making it feel organic. So an R, for example, let me break this down. If we have a, uh, an L, I feel like that's the easiest one. An L is the tongue O. Is that a threat I smell? The tongue's at the top of the mouth. Let go. L. The L sound, let go. The T also does the same thing. Let go, right? The L is a pressurized tongue pressing against the mouth. L. Happening when this whoosh flies down. So again, you can prep this early. You can have the tongue, you know, be low, and then you can have the tongue come up early. And then when you go, that's when you get that pressure, the tongue really pushes. Let, and the moment that you get a different sound is when the tongue flicks down from up here, down to here. And it's usually a big spacing. That's what these lines represent. Bigger spacing on one frame, smaller spacing on the next frame, meaning one frame is here, next frame is here, and then maybe it's a little bit lower on this has to come back up. The tongue is a very fast muscle. It does not do a lot of easing. You can't just set like, pose here, pose here, and the, the tongue cannot float. The tongue is a very, very fast muscle. Um, here's some x-ray footage to show how much really the tongue does. It's kind of gross, it's kind of weird, but the tongue is, is fast. But the T, coming with the T, let, uh, you can see it. The T is also at the top, but it's not as pressurized. Let go. It just kind of, Oop, it just kind of hits the top, just kind of kisses the top. Let go. Well, let go, right? The T has to come up here to block the air. Let, well, there's the, you know, the way I say it is to kind of just stop pressurizing any dialogue and say let, and I like stop, like let, but let go. Let, t t t right? It's the burst of air from behind the tongue. So if you go, let go. Let go, like there's a little bit of a tongue release there. But if you just say, let go, it still goes up. It still just goes up, but it may not pressurize and push as hard. It might just go, let, and it just kind of seals it. Hope this is making sense. This is, I mean, and this is exactly why I break, uh, why I write it down, because you can kind of make notes for yourself. Okay, well, this is how the L works. I can build it up, pressurize it. And then when I hear this break between these letters, that's when this happens. But the tongue's gotta come right back up, which gives you an opportunity to maybe have like a, like a quick like wave through the tongue as like, the top comes down, but the back is already moving up and then you have it kind of like you can have that, you know, that. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas if you have like an R, when I say R, my tongue isn't doing much, but it's not laying on the ground, R. If I don't allow my tongue to move at all, it sounds very different. Are you okay? To have my tongue there, are you okay? My tongue is actually kind of filtering some of the air in my mouth as it comes out, right? Are you okay versus are you okay? So the tongue is doing stuff. It's not just dead in there. So you can't just leave it alone. When I do the R, I like to have the tongue kind of in the middle of the mouth. 
are, and it's kind of floating in there. So feel it out, try it. Like, look at what your character's doing, look at where the tongue is, and then try to talk like that. If your character's tongue is sitting at the bottom of your mouth, it's going to sound very different. It almost sounds like I'm doing an Adam Sandler bit because he always talks in voices like this, but he does it in a really rude way. <laughs> and that's what I call high quality eight tools. But you can hear how, how drastically different that is, right? If I didn't have a tongue, it'd probably be even more different because it's still probably doing stuff that I can't fully control. You know, some of the back muscles or whatever, but that should get across the point that like, you can't talk without your tongue in the way you'd expect. So it is very important. L, T, D, same thing, the D. So if you take any dialogue you're working on, you break it down, you look for the landmarks, and that's the thing. Each word, each sound, each letter has different landmarks depending on what filter you're looking through. If you're looking for corners, jaw, lips, or tongue, there are different rules for different letters, and by the time you get through all four layers of that, you've got most of your dialogue pretty set. And then everything else that's left is just a matter of making sure those things flow, looking for those like those valleys and those kind of reversals of directions and making sure you've got the contrast where you want it to be and shaping things to help kind of blend between stuff, right? So that is how you can look at an entire scene of dialogue, figure out very quickly like where you need to be focused and keep all that great organicness in the, because like, this should all feel very organic. It should not feel robotic. There's a lot going on here. Getting all that in there, breaking it apart can help with that. So finally, we can now go to the last section of the video, the four steps to polish. It's treason, then. There's a lot to look at with the, the whole character's face and the head and the body and the performance and all the stuff. I'm just talking about lip sync again. So there's, there's still more to talk about, but just talking about the lip sync, the dialogue, you're gonna be very connected to the face. There's a lot of stuff that's related. But the first thing that I would generally look at, because it's usually the biggest thing to look at, is breath. You can hear in a lot of audio, breathing. And while sometimes that affects the mouth, sometimes it doesn't. But it's always something you should consider. Really, some, it's always something you should consider. Because you might have someone who goes, <sighs> and then starts talking. That's gonna give you an opportunity to do something with the nose, which we're not really talking about, but you know, that's a nose thing. It's also a mouth pose. It's a lip shape. It's it's a jaw push up. I think I just spit. It's a jaw push up. It's a lip shape. It might be a corner thing. And then you go straight into, all right, the mouth's already open. You don't have to go, ah, all right. You don't have to like close it, then open it. That's, a, that's one of those reversals. That's like, it's changing direction. Does it need to? Can you just flow into it? That is also one thing with the jaw that I forgot to mention that like, you don't always have to return to neutral. If you have your mouth open, it can stay open. Nothing says it has to go back to the T-pose version of your face. Also, oh, one thing I, I forgot to say as well, you can have these things kind of overlap with each other. Like you can use them to fight against each other. What I mean by that is like, take the M. An M is usually, mm, it's usually slower when it opens than a B or a P. B and P, plosive, they pop open. That's the whole point, they pop. Gives you opportunity for cheek stuff. But the M, you might say mom, mom, right? Mm, mm, mom. The jaw can open without the lips opening. You can, you can kind of blend those two. You can have, if you just go jaw, mom, mom, they might just come together. But if you manually animate the lips to go against what the jaw is doing, mom, you can get that peel. You can get that organic fleshiness. And that's where you can start to get some of this polished stuff. I'm jumping ahead. We're supposed to talk about breath. Breath is important. Sometimes you can hear it. Sometimes it's here, but it's often here. I have a whole video on animating breath. I should probably do a more updated one with more detail, but breath is important with lip sync. It's, you have to consider it because all that stuff comes from somewhere. So you want to show that in the body performance, in the neck, wherever you can. The next thing I'm going to tell you is connectivity and fleshiness, which is kind of what I was mentioning before. The whole face is connected. When you do stuff with your mouth, it affects your cheeks, which affects your eyes, your ears, like, everything, your, your neck, like if you scream, go rah, you freak out, you get these lines. All of this is connected, so you can't just do a mouth pass and call it done, like you have to integrate all of this, which is why facial animation is so closely tied to lip sync, because they're the same thing, just different parts of it. Fleshiness is what I meant by like the M thing, of just having like mwah, that, that's fleshiness, it's having the squish and the, the squash and the stretch, things like that. Next up is pushing graphic and appealing shapes. Shape, I actually have that in the uh, the three tips video. So that one, I dive a little bit deeper. I won't spend too much time here, but the goal with that one is to not just have default 3D poses or just some generic shape you draw, whatever it is, to actually shape it with attitude, to give it emotion and intention so that the sound makes sense in context of how the character's 
feeling when they say it. The goal here is to have interesting shapes, the volcano mouth, things like that, that I talked about in that video. And finally for polish, something that can really make it feel fun is mouth flow. Now we've talked a little bit about shape flow and having things kind of work together, but actually moving the mouth around the face you can do it for a peel, you can kind of cheat it three quarters for a more 2D thing, like if your character's looking this way and the mouth is very symmetrical just over here, there's all this wasted space. You can move the mouth and go, ah, move it over. Yes, but when you, you know, so you can have the mouth kind of moving like it's a drawing, have it feel like an organic thing that can move around the face. So if someone goes, whoa, you know, like, I can only just go, whoa, like it just kind of stays in place, but you could have the character almost throw their mouth around their skull and go, whoa and like it goes like the lips can come off the surface you can get fun silhouettes let me just show you an example of something that i've been i did this test on twitch a while back i think this is actually gonna be really fun it sucks because now your chances of getting killer are like super low the two things to look at here hopefully you laugh when he goes that's the thing i'm hoping you laughed at that was the focus remember in the very beginning of the video i talked about having a moment something to make it stand out and memorable for me that's the part that's the thing i was looking for and getting it to actually push off the side of the face as silhouette that was me pushing the poses for appeal trying to make it fun but uh at the end you might see the mouth kind of moves and goes Whoa. it kind of feels fleshy that's you know on my twitch demo that's what i was going for and so that's what i mean by mouth flow, being able to actually move the mouth and have it move with the shapes, feel like it's an organic part of the performance with arcs and all that kind of stuff. I've named a lot of videos in this video that I've already made that are like related to these topics. So I've dropped links to those below. So if you want to catch up on some of that stuff, there you go. There's time code chapter markers. If you need to come back to this video, take some more notes. Like this is a lot of stuff that I've pulled from industry talks, panels, classes, I don't know, a bunch of different places and just some stuff I've come up with on my own. I have a friend who's a speech and language pathologist that we've kind of had conversations about this stuff. So there's a lot of different sources. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, drop a comment, all that stuff that helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people see this and the channel does well. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and if you have anything else to share, please drop it below by all means. Share your information, share your knowledge. Um, we have a Discord server, all the links below. And if you want to get your stuff looked at, get some reviews of this kind of thing, talk about it more one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, link to my Patreon is below as well, where we do dailies every week and you can get your animation reviewed and we can talk about it as a group. All right, I think that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you and I'll see you in the next one.